welcome all thanks for joining on a sunday evening not wasting much time let me introduce to our speaker shawn de cruz he is our alumni and he was also training and placement head for the year 2020 former aws employee and currently working at flock direct i groups of company and he was also campus editor linkedin over to you now shawn hi guys so uh I, I believe we are here for a LinkedIn workshop on how to how to utilize LinkedIn to make sure that you can achieve something other than uh, college and uh, extra curricular activities. So um, it's it's a Sunday evening. It's four o eight, and there are about how many? Why one ninety two participants? So um, before I go ahead, I just want to. Understand that what is your uh, perspective of what you can achieve, right? Um, yep. Yeah. So uh, I see there are about 180 uh, okay, so one hundred ninety-five participants, and not one camera on. Not a single camera on, and that is the very reason that I have myself not switched on my camera. The first step to LinkedIn, the first step to doing something is that you are ready to accept that. It That you can uh, probably you don't need somebody to initiate something. You should always be the ones initiating what is that? So uh, let's let's start your cameras. Everybody, is it possible for you all to start your cameras? I don't think uh, anybody here is going to judge you on how you look. Or, like I think that is the bare like the least of a concern. So like let's just get. Find it really nice to not be looking at a black screen, but looking at faces. And uh, that's my how... video has been disabled by the host. Oh, okay, it has been disabled by the host. Can we have it uh, started, Agni? Is there is that is there a post possibility? Oh uh, yeah, I have allowed them now to perfect. disable it. The... Perfect. All right. So can we start your cameras, everybody? All right. So um. Let's not keep the session a session where I only I talk about what LinkedIn is, and you guys just keep listening. Rather, we'll have some cold ice picking sessions where you can talk about what you expect from the session, and uh, a lot more than that. All right. So uh, let's start. Okay, let's start with what LinkedIn is. How do you plan to utilize LinkedIn and so on and so forth? Okay. So can anybody here tell me what are you thinking? When it comes to LinkedIn, what is the first thought process? What is your idea behind LinkedIn? And it's a uh, like, how do you think? Just a vague answer. Like, what do you expect out of LinkedIn? Can anybody go ahead and answer that? Anybody would do. Like, there is no right answer to this. I'm just looking to understand what you guys think about it. Anybody? Or should or should I pick somebody? Is that how this works? Should I pick somebody? Anybody from the crowd? All right. I think uh, no for a yes. Actually, so um, can Pratik? Pratik, I see you on my screen, and that is the reason. Can you tell me, Pratik Lahori? Can you tell me uh, what do you think about LinkedIn? How do you think, like anything? What what are your views on LinkedIn? So it's uh, it's basically to get a good job from a LinkedIn profile. Perfect. Amazing. Perfect. One part of the answer is absolutely correct. All right. Two things going forward. Please don't call me sir. I've just graduated in 2020. It makes me look old. And uh, yeah, the video has been disabled. It's been disabled. Like Agni, can you look into this? Oh uh, yeah, you can actually allow. Oh. All right. So um, LinkedIn. All right. Yeah, so Pratik, what you said was actually very correct. LinkedIn is used to find out jobs, but the one, the one basic crux that we forget is more than jobs, more than anything, more than jobs, more than studies, and and like what's that? LinkedIn is actually used to uh, to network, all right, 
the crux of anything you go on from now, I believe on your first year or your third year of engineering, or whatever years of engineering, you should understand that LinkedIn is the first process to network. If you are not on LinkedIn, and when I say you are not on LinkedIn, I don't mean that uh, you can just create a profile on LinkedIn and be like, okay, some magic is gonna happen. Because that is never gonna happen. You have to make sure that you work on LinkedIn every day to create content for the or your connection so that they can connect with you and give you opportunities. So the first step to understand LinkedIn is LinkedIn is not Facebook, LinkedIn is not uh, Instagram. But LinkedIn is a mixture of both, but it provides you way more information about what is going on in the current scenario and how can you utilize the same to get jobs. See, the goal is to get jobs and, and probably create connections that give you job references. But the way the process, the process is to network. So networking, I believe, is the most important part any anything that you go on from now on. So uh, let's let's not waste anything. So there's something new to you which might just give you a basic uh, idea of what and how important it is. Just give me a second. Um, yeah, no, it's so when I started on LinkedIn over a year ago, it was for a very different reason. I was looking for a new position, but through building relationships and creating consistent content, the opportunities have been incredible. Speaking engagements all over the world, and I ramped up my consulting business and all of my clients come through LinkedIn or through relationships I've built on LinkedIn. It's given me more opportunities than anything else because I've been able to build a personal brand around the type of content that I create. So people now reach out to me when they want advice or, and people will reach out to me to mentor me. And I've had an enormous amount of opportunities because of it. And personally, I, I have a friend group on there that's um, some of the closest people I know in my life right now because all the people that I know are professionally interested, some in, in the exact field that I want to be in. So personally, LinkedIn has helped me to embrace my unique story and really share that with the world. And that has helped me professionally as well because I can get connected with both students and professionals around the world who share a similar story. LinkedIn has been absolutely monumental in my life. The number of people that I've met on this platform has been crazy. The amount of reach that I've gathered through the videos that I create and everything like that, it's, it's, I couldn't put my word, my, my finger on it. And I've always wanted to be on the YouTube and the Instagram wave. And I think LinkedIn video, especially, is gonna be that next wave of social media content creation. So that's why I'm still creating on it. The reason why I started creating content on LinkedIn was to share all the tips and tricks I was learning outside of the classroom, especially around digital marketing. A few months after, I was able to secure a full-time job and actually drop out of school. Today, I have over a half million views of my content, have impacted hundreds of other students, and am living my dream to the fullest. I think the reason why I became so invested in LinkedIn was because I wanted to kind of be like a fly on the wall towards the industries, the companies, and even the people who were doing what I wanted to do. And through LinkedIn, I've been able to build relationships that go far beyond the platform. It's a great platform to highlight your skills and experiences to others and kind of like be like your own brand as well on this platform. It has helped me develop my critical thinking skills, my writing skills, and my communication skills. So get active on the platform, you will not regret it. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys there. Um, yeah, so uh, there are three observations from this uh, video which I believe you must have seen. First of all, which is very, very much out there, is there is not a single Indian on that video. Can, can anybody tell me why are why are Indians not a part of such uh, such such programs or something of this sort? Where where you need people to be talking about how they created or not created or not. Can anybody answer this? Anybody uh, can anybody answer this? Um, maybe yeah. because of maybe because of we all are like more into the rat race of just getting job in unconventional ways like just finding it via our college or just sending resume from uh, job portals and, and not exploring much, not 
uh, bridling or horizon or something like that absolutely absolutely i see people writing in the comment section i know you pointed out like pointed out perfectly so uh, there is something written because we don't think anyone outside our education system correct because of lack of uh, one thing yeah okay lack of upgradation and still orthodox in approach perfect they're not ready to accept the fact that this might end up getting a job all right so we got some pretty good answers about why people think that uh, that indians are not there so what i get out of this is the so first like, let's let's break it down okay let's break it down into a little sort of a uh, revelation what we can say here is that these students like i am also been there these students depend on our placement cells our placement officers training placement coordinators to get us a job See, most of you all here are looking to utilize LinkedIn to get a job. So that's what I'm going to start doing. So the the reason what like like for example, um, your K11 has mentioned that because we don't okay, Shruti, sorry, we don't think anyone uh, outside education system. But what Agnew pointed out that we depend on our people. See, if you're looking out for It, like if you're dependent on something, you're gonna be dependent on it forever. But if you look out these like look out to these countries outside, like uh, US, UK, Canada, these countries don't have a placement cell. Like any college, any any university you pick up, you can ask your friends who are studying abroad. These guys don't have uh, pick up any any college for that matter, any university. You can pick up Harvard for this matter. They don't have a placement cell. They have career fairs, and can can anybody here tell me what is a career fair? Like, do you all know what is a career fair? Like, anybody? Does anybody have the slightest of idea what's a career fair? Anybody want to go abroad for studies? Okay, there's some things out there. Okay, this is somewhat clear. A fair that helps you choose what you want. It's somewhat close, but uh. A career fair. Let me break this down for you. A uh, career fair is uh, multiple people walk in and give an opportunity for employment. Kind of there, Devang. Kind of there. Anybody else wants to give it a shot? It's a kind of expo, a job expo. Okay. Yes. But I'm looking for a particular word. So you don't get jobs out of this expo. You don't get like there's nobody who's going to offer you a job or a career, like a career fair. I'm looking for a particular sort of. Uh, A word that I'm only been talking about right now. Can anybody networking? Like Absolutely, it is for networking. So let me give you an instance again. Okay? This there's a friend of mine. So we, because I think you'll be able to connect much more better. So there's a friend of mine who's studying at UIC. Okay, he's had in Mumbai University. He's done his engineering from Mumbai. He's been a ten pointer. Okay, average for ten pointer. Okay, just imagine what a great. A great big deal, this guy is. Ten pointer throughout the. I don't know. His average was twelve pointer, and uh, he goes there. He gets it to UIC, and uh, after that, there's just one thing. Okay, he's not very good at like expressing himself or probably uh, coming forth and talking about himself. So can you tell me that? Like, just give me a. So there is this thing about UIC that you have some user time limit to find the job, and that is six months. So just give me a random guess, guys. What would be the month where he would have got? And he was, like, to be really honest, with his studies at UIC, he had topped each class, like each class there. So can you tell me a time frame where he would have got a job there? Can anyone tell me in the six months which month would have been where he got a job? Anybody? Like, this is just a random thought. Like, what do you think? A ten pointer, breaking it completely in every academic scale. What month would it be where he got a job? Can you tell me? Anybody? Almost any. Okay, you can just write it down immediately. Okay, somebody says immediately. Anybody else who wants to give a shot? Right after he finishes his degree, Shruti says. Okay, Shruti says right after he finishes his degree. Anybody else who wants to give a shot? Just one more answer. Since he's yeah okay perfect. Since his scores were really good, I'm telling you about exceptional. Can anybody else tell me 
then like just one more answer and then i'll give it i'll break it out after one to two years oh no the visa is there just all right oh this is a very logical answer next day after the interview <laughs> okay this is a very logical answer anyways so i'll break it down for you like uh, he got a job one day before his visa was supposed to expire that is one day before he was about to come to india like he was on the us can you tell me why like why would have this been the case can anybody tell me this because in us you don't get jobs because you are smart you have to express yourself and network properly absolutely who was this can you just tell me your name like indrajit yadav yeah indrajit this is absolutely the case that was the case in the us or in countries like this people don't like they they absolutely value your academics but they need more than your academics they need you to showcase portray yourself but how can you be an asset to the company and not somebody who's just good at not learning or probably the practical stuff so that was one of the reasons where he lacked and he got a job just one day before his visa ended that to after taking a lot of training uh, like a lot of consulting and all that so talking about linkedin linkedin is the place where you need to network where you need to tell people about what are you good at and like how can you make a difference like how are you at linkedin to make a difference so now i'm going to go forward and show you something like let's just get on to the theoretical stuff where i tell you about how important linkedin is but how can you use it to make sure that you stand out when i was in my first year there were no such workshops there was no such uh, concentration on focus on why is linkedin important why should you be on linkedin so i'm just going to show you something uh, just give me a second yeah so uh, we we'll just walk through a, a normal presentation which a colleague of mine has created on to how can you use linkedin to properly crush it now when i say crush it I don't mean that the little sense, but how can you make a difference and how can you stand out? All right. So the vision is to create economic opportunities for members of the global workforce. So when I talk about economic opportunities, that's what we mean: jobs, create jobs for people out there. You can go up to LinkedIn statistics. The statistics are from the last year, when 90% of the recruiters actually used to source LinkedIn, actually used LinkedIn to source candidates. and you can go about these uh, statistics and i believe it's gone way above this one year it's all due to lockdown and covid uh, menace it might have gone a way more higher so why linkedin as i already mentioned building a powerful network is very important we will get on to how can you do that but right now let's just go about this building a powerful network keep learning okay i keep learning why and how and all the wh questions and i'm i'm very sure that that linkedin is a place where you can keep learning there are people with their experiences there are people with, with a lot of experience to talk about how can you land up for a job so there are people who got the job and they keep talking about how can they how can you for example get into amazon or facebook or any other country or any other company where uh, which is which might be your dream job next is realizing your earning potential so we in we we in we are very skeptical about the 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 part when it comes to salaries and 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 different sorts of payouts but linkedin is the one place where you can actually know how much is the particular position that you're aiming for and your career in that position gain you the monetary funds so that is one thing about it. the next is thought leadership thought leadership in the sense you need to understand what are you good at are you good at content creation are you good at are you good at networking are you good at talking to people are you good at communication are you good at so on and so on there are so many things the reason why i said establish your profile at the very end people might be thinking if you know this i just said establish your profile at the very end is because linkedin growing and linkedin creating your profile never stops it's never going to stop it's never be like ki okay my profile on linkedin that's it i don't have to see you know you have to keep doing it till a very long time i can tell you till you retire i've seen people with great experiences still building on linkedin still making sure that 
their profile is not completely done yet. There are a few things here and there left out. So that's there. Now coming to what can you do with LinkedIn? First, your impact. So how will you use LinkedIn to make sure that you make a mark on people? You make like you make you tell them that there's a shawl out there on LinkedIn doing stuff which might be important or which might interest. Second is your brand. So you might have heard these people in the video talking about building their own brand. That is when I talk about building your own brand. It basically means that building your own self such that people value you, so that people know that you're an asset. All right. The next in line is your content. Content is very important. I will get to it. But right now, we just go ahead, but it's very important. And the community you're building. We've already spoken a lot about networking. So, your impact, creating an impact, identify your strengths, identify your passion. Clarify your goals and craft your impact pieces. So identifying your strengths is knowing anything that you want to do in the future. Knowing your job, like job, job aspect, your career scope, so on and so forth. Identifying your passion, let's say for example, you're into a job in TCS, right? And you're doing an ML-based job. But you realize that, oh no, this is good, but I want to do something. Something other than this. So that is where you realize, that is where it clicks you. LinkedIn that there are a lot more specific fields that you can explore, which can which could be your passion. Clarify your goals in the sense you cannot be, I believe most of you are from the engineering side. So even if you're in your first year right now, you are you are a bit ambiguous about what is your final goal. Then this is the problem. You should know, at least you should know the process or the path that you're gonna take to reach your goal. It can be getting a good job. Can be getting a landing a university abroad or so on and so forth. But you should at least have a set of goals that you have in your mind. The, na the next is craft your impact pieces. This is something similar to the get to them. So your brand. So how are you gonna link this? Like how you like this is what we say at LinkedIn compared to the campus at first. How are you gonna link in? Like what this basically means is how are you gonna make sure that people know about you. So this is a colleague of mine who is created this profile picture. Can anybody tell me what sort of a profile picture would be uh, perfect for LinkedIn? Like right? anybody out there? Should it be a garden picture or should it be a picture in some With a professional garden? setup? Any formal clothing so, would work. Absolutely. See that again, nailed it. Uh, formal clothing. Uh, it can only if it if it, a perfect picture would be something that is only up to like up to and like it just should your face. Uh, formal clothing that's perfect. That is absolutely. The next in line is the banner Im image. So what is a banner image? Can anybody tell me about what is a banner image? Like here we can see German's face, but can anybody tell me what is a banner image? We have something similar on Facebook. Anybody? The cover picture. The cover picture. Absolutely, Um So the cover picture should be aligned with your interest. It should be something that you want to do in the future. So, for example, your Jamil mentioned that these are his role which he expertise in. Event logistics, partnerships, sponsorships, sales and marketing, project management, and communicate. So, basically, it should be something in line with what you want to do in the future, something that aligns with your goal. The next is headline. Your headline should always be crisp about what you're going to do, what are you planning to do, so on and so forth. Do not write a big headline about what is your goal, what is your uh, your, your future aspects and like perspectives. Just keep it short and sweet about what are you doing right now. Like, for example, German is mentioned here, joining a new company soon. He could have mentioned the company he's joining, but he's not done that. Okay? Event operations at impact mentality, LinkedIn campus editor and learning ambassador, and social impact in tech. The shorter it is, the better it is. You just need to be crisp with what you're going to do. What are your future goals? What are you going to do in future? And something that you're already doing. All right. The fourth is the summary. So basically, I've seen many people on LinkedIn use this part of the uh, of LinkedIn to write about uh, something like something that they get from LinkedIn itself. 
So there is a customized thing that LinkedIn provides you uh, about your own profile based on the skills that you might have picked. Never do that. Never pick that. That is one thing you should never, ever, ever in bold use that as a summary. Please always customize your summary. Please always make sure that your summary is something that you are, not something that some other person or some some tool has given it to you. That needs to be very much customized. Say, for example, German here has written, technology is a double-edged sword that sets others behind or propels them forward. I don't think this is not original. This is very original. The moment I see this, I know that this guy is talking sense. This guy knows how to portray himself. This guy knows how to, like, this guy is a total brand. This is what I realized the moment I read this. I collaborate with cross-functional teams to empower, grow, and learn with individuals and organizations to build lasting partnerships and go to market solutions. So this, these, these two lines actually show everything that he does. Absolutely. He's not mentioned any degree, not mentioned anything of that sort. He's just mentioned the nature of his work. So a, a summary that, that is showing what you do, that is showing the nature of your work. And finally, I work with organizations that evolve around Gen Z. So this is what he wants to do. Currently doing and wants to evolve with it. So your summary should actually, like here it's rightly mentioned, include your impact thesis, utilize keywords and industry zones of interest, share your address, aspirations, etc. Do not, please, 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 do not use a tool to generate something of this sort. Do not use uh, the, 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 the basic like the basic things available on the internet. Please sit down. It just takes like about an hour or so to actually think about a good summary for yourself. So please make sure that you do that. A summary that is good actually showcases that you're, a, you're really good at, at, at like on LinkedIn to, to network and to make sure that people know what your worth is. All right, so the next and the final is media. So can anybody tell me what can you put in media, except for your resume, obviously. Can anybody tell me what can you put on your media? Anybody, don't tell me you guys are always sleepy. I'm half there. Come Any on. certificates that we acquired recently or anything? that highlights our skills perfect correct certificates something of the reason see you need to see something that i mentioned on top was your linkedin profile keeps building it will never stop so what exactly he mentioned is you need to have this 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 quote unquote recent accomplishments recent certifications that you've done to go after along with your cv your resume or cover letter so this is about your profile on LinkedIn. I hope you understood a fair idea. We've got a fair idea of what it should be like. Does anybody have any questions? You're free, for, you're free to shoot me questions. Anything? Anybody? Or can we go ahead? Anybody? Any questions? Or can, 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 can I go ahead? You can give me a yes. Please tell me a yes if I can go ahead. Go ahead. Perfect. All right. So translating your brand to your profile. So can anybody tell me if this profile is a good profile or a bad profile or does it need some improvement? Anybody out here, does it? How much would you rate this profile on a scale of 1 to 10? It's just Tiffany, which is a campus editor too. But have you noticed she's not mentioned about the campus editor thing here? Because that might have been in the past and she has achieved something more than it right now. So she's not mentioned. She mentioned something about connecting talent to opportunity, host of the Work in Progress podcast. And create a flex. So, can anybody tell me if this profile on LinkedIn is actually a good one or not? Anybody? Is it a good? Is it a bad profile? You want to? Okay, there are chats popping up. Okay. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, the profile also shows her interest in basically music or in its industries, ML or something. Right. Right. All right. So, uh, Shruti has mentioned the summary basically should just be a small summary about yourself. Uh, okay, this is a question. So, it should be a small summary about yourself. You can, let's, let's keep it a crisp summary about yourself and your aspirations. All right? It should not only be focusing everything about yourself. 
you get it not completely about yourself but not like it should include something like what do you want to do in the future and what are you currently doing like what are you doing what are you up to these days please don't call me sir please all right so uh, somebody mentioned that uh, it's a good profile all right perfect uh, what about the the background banner is it perfect why do you think has she put in these uh, these uh, spotify gana i don't know what what other Yes, because she mentioned she makes podcasts. Perfect. So, uh, is anybody here who is doing a podcast? Anybody who wants to do a podcast? Do you think there is one thing missing? I feel there is one thing that's missing. Her handle for each of them. What do we search? You are almost there. Not her handle, because then these they might then it might be a bit more popular. But something a short. Uh, uh, something that shows her work. She mentioned. She did she see the presentations now. She mentioned about her podcast, what she does, but she not given us all example or something of that sort. So I feel if there were something that gave an example of her work, it could have really made a big difference because people like to know. People don't have time to go through your profile. If you feel that people are going to come on your LinkedIn profile, be like, oh my god, this is X Y Z. I want to go through the entire profile. No, 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 no. That's not happening. People will never ever do that. People want to keep it really short, really short. They just speak it, and if they like it, they're gonna go ahead. So you need to make sure that this part of the profile is really nice. It's really like connecting them to stay longer on your profile. All right. Any questions here, guys? Any questions? Please feel free to ask me questions. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Any questions? I take that one go and I'll go ahead. But uh, but an example of how could have she given an example about the podcast? All right. So on LinkedIn, you can share your uh, your uh, like the short podcast audios or something of that sort that people can hear, people can know. So if you see this latest uh, thing that they've added, is you can like for example, let's go back to Tiffany. So let's say she doesn't pronounce her name as Tiffany. Yeah, it can be, I don't know, Tiffany. Let Let's take a different example perspective. Lena has recently uh, given this tool sort of thing where you can actually put on a small sound thing when a person pronounces his name. So that is something that could have, and along with it, you can actually give a short, uh, a short audio or a short link to something that you've done in your summary itself, in your bio itself. That this is the work I've done. You can check this out here. Something of that sort. Does it answer my does it answer your question, Shruti? Perfect, perfect. Great. All right. So, uh, can you tell me what should you be posting on LinkedIn? Anybody? What should you be posting? On your achievements, your opinions that uh, go around with your goals, which will help uh, uh, recruiters to understand your. Perspective. Absolutely, Dasha. So, uh, let me let me uh, mention the job you desire to have. Perfect, Devan. That is a very nice way to go. Uh, let me tell you this one thing, okay? Never limit your profile to only put accomplishments. Please, please, if you can write this somewhere, if you can remember it, great. Never ever put just your accomplishments. It does. People like to see what, like, what you failed at. What is something that you didn't know about that you feel like now, and you're doing pretty good. Then I see this is the thing I've noticed about our Mumbai University students. Okay, we keep posting stuff about workshops, about accomplishments, about some some workshop that we might have done, and we got a certification. Great, wonderful. I really like what you've done. Absolutely, but it will be a lot more better. If you just didn't talk about your workshop, but actually give an insight of how difficult that workshop was, how did you choose that workshop, and what made you like stick to that workshop till the very end? You need to understand one thing when I talk about posting content, creating content. That LinkedIn is not a place where people love to see things. Great, I would love to see your accomplishments, but I would want to know how did you get it. You don't give them a Process a way to reach where they where you are today. They're gonna not they, they're not gonna connect. So please always make sure that they use LinkedIn to 
two people, you teach people. You can be in your first year, you can be a level student, you can be a 12th student. If you have done something, let's say if you've done a normal workshop, some workshop on Python, and you feel that, oh, I've achieved a certain thing. Tell people about how difficult it is. Tell people how did you get there? What made you learn? What made you stick to the workshop? So that people really know that, oh, this is not just a normal workshop accomplishment course, but more than that. It's more than that. I would love to know, for example, I just saw Darshan. Let's say Darshan has done a, 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 a workshop or a certification in Python, and he's posted that this is the workshop I did. Can you believe that uh, uh, the, the, the workshop content, the, the syllabus was pretty difficult, but I made sure that I went through it. I did some extra extra uh, hours with my friends and colleagues, some professors, or even a YouTube channel that helped me. Because people who are doing something of a similar sort know how to go about this. So does this make sense, guys? This is one of the examples. Does this make sense? You can put a yes in the comment box, the chat box, if you think that you can't see it. You can just put a yes. Perfect. Okay, then there are a few questions. This is where you need to think about. This is where, where actually what I have to do is I just gave you an example. Let's say I have done a uh, workshop or a certification on, 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 on Java, okay? Java. A, a, a one week certification on Java or something of that sort. Tell people about why did you choose Java? First and most important. What made you choose Java? There are a lot more sub there are a lot more languages, but why Java? Tell them about that. Tell them about why this course. Why this course about Java? Some, say for example, you did it from Coursera. What made you interested about this course particularly? Third is your difficulties that you faced in this uh, during this course. Let's for, like for example, you find, found some topics difficult and it was not very well explained or something, and you went on to a YouTube channel or you asked the peers or your professors or something of that sort. So you need to mention these three points. People need to know that, okay, it's not just a, okay, it's not just a, a workshop accomplishment course, but let's say in the future, if Devang wants to do a, a course on uh, Java, he knows that, okay, these are points I need to keep in my mind. And this is how I'm going to go about it. So does this answer your question, Deva? Perfect. Absolutely great. All right. Moving on to sharing, like, just about content. Sharing fascinating content. Please make sure that you don't use LinkedIn just to post or just to be there to be there. Only make sure that you keep posting something. You can keep a timeline. I know you guys are busy. I know everybody is busy. But make sure that you keep posting something at least on your profile. It can be it can be a normal thing that you see that that caught your attention. It can be something from the news that you feel okay. I should talk about it. Just keep giving your opinions. Don't just limit yourself to a workshop post or something of that sort. Keep posting. The one the one basic agenda for facing LinkedIn is that you keep posting. Please 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 do not ever stop posting or not. Keep posting. If you stop, that's that's where your LinkedIn is going to go down. It can be a one week, like you can have a timeline. Okay? This is what I do. I, I make it a point to at least post once in a month. So you can keep something similar, like post at least once in a month or bi weekly or something of that sort. All right. Yeah, so here he's mentioned best practices for LinkedIn. So uh, content matters, you can always share quality insights about you, which I just spoke about. Mention people. That is what I was talking about. Say, for example, if you burn a workshop, mention people who help you with it by tagging them. So this this increases your viewership. Okay, you might have 200 people on your follow list or something or your connections, but when you tag people, there are more people who, who actually see your post, who know. That's how because their followers and their connections get to know that okay, this is something that's done. Share consistently. Very important what I just spoke about. Have a timeline. You can do it bi-weekly. You can do it once in a month or something of that sort. Using the relevant hashtags. So on Facebook, uh, there are people who put hashtags. And I've not, I've not seen a lot of people using hashtags on LinkedIn, but you should use hashtags. Say, for example, you posted something about uh, about some, some, some spiritual topic. So please make sure that you use hashtags that people who are interested on those topics can actually 
see what you've done. All right, start or join a conversation. So this is where I was coming on to. Say for example, you see that there is somebody in your follow request or in your follow follow their connections who is done a, a course or who is done who is just graduated from some college that you are planning to get. Get into a conversation with that person. Get to know what were his ideas, what were his principles. You can first just create a a normal congratulations. This is what this is what I would have done. Congratulated him on his post. You need to understand LinkedIn is not Facebook. You can connect with as many as people on LinkedIn without knowing them. This is not considered to be a, an awkward situation or something of that sort. Please connect with as many as people you can and engage with them. Get to know what they are doing, how they are doing it, and that's that's how it's going to really work. Visibility. Include a photo or video. This is something that we've already spoken about. Okay. Best practice is that you just spoke. No, 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 stick here. The three C's are great writing. Clear, confident, and concise. Clear in the sense, translate things in a way that people connect. Don't use a very high language. Don't. You might be very good at your vocab. Okay. But make sure that you write in a way that people can. Of all backgrounds can connect. It should be like even if I'm not done something, do not ever feel a question your content. Never. Always be sure about what you're posting. These words that he is mentioned sometimes, possibly, I think, etc., etc. Please stay away from these words because it makes that it makes people think that you're not very confident about what you're posting. I'm concise. Concise in the sense, write something up to the point. Do not go beating behind the bush. So yeah, three C's of are good, great writing. Any any questions after you guys? Any questions? Okay. Oh, okay. So why is a timeline necessary? See, uh, should, okay, who is it? This is Devan. Okay. So Devan, you need to understand that people on LinkedIn need to know what you're up to these days. Okay. So if it, it doesn't need to be a personal data sort of thing, it can anything, it can be anything. You can you can post about a, an instance that you noticed happening outside a bakery, or maybe something that happened that made you realize something. It cannot always be about work. It cannot always be about uh, something related to academic. It can anything. Something that gave you an insight of how beautiful this world is. You write about it only. People love such things. Work is absolutely amazing. Write about things other than work. That too is a great thing on me. So yeah, so I hope this answers your question, Deva. Perfect. The secret. So if you are guys who share videos on LinkedIn, then you should actually start. Like I can go ahead and share this thing with you. You can actually go through it. I'm not going to waste time here because people are actually wanting to know for how to show some jobs or probably opportunities on LinkedIn, and that is what I'm going to land on. So if, if you are looking to learn more about videos or something, you can always reach out to me, okay? Yeah, this is about uh, using LinkedIn. So any questions about LinkedIn profile, how to build a LinkedIn profile, so on and so forth. All right. So let's get on to the next part. Okay, there is yeah, Sean, one. just one question. Yeah, how important is the yeah. uh, recommendation? We don't have much to show. Yes, let me come to that. Uh, who is this? Uh, can you tell me your name? Like I think it's uh... Indrajit. Who, who's up? Indrajit. Okay, yeah, we we'll get to it. Just give me like some time and get on to it. So, uh, Kunal has asked me what if we don't have much to show? Uh, Kunal, let me tell you this, this this idea, right? This idea I heard is a very pessimistic idea. What if we don't have much to show? It's not necessary if you have much, if you don't have much. We need to keep this idea. Okay, this is what I kept telling myself throughout the time when I started building on LinkedIn. Doesn't matter if I don't have much to show. It should be the quality of what I'm showing. Sure. Doesn't need to be 15 things that you've done in your life. It can be two, but you can have prepared in a well, like in a way that people actually connect. People know, okay, Kunal has done this, which is exceptionally well. So it does not matter if you don't have much to show. It can be the way you're showing it. You need to understand LinkedIn is not about how much, but the way you portray it. 
the quality, not the quantity. People, people don't care about how many workshops you attend, how many services. People want to know how you did it. People want to know what made you do it. So this is what about writing stuff. People want to know about the failure. If I was a person looking at uh, somebody's profile, I would want to know how did they get a job at Amazon. People keep coming up to me and asking me, how did you land a job at Amazon Web Services? Not how happy I am about getting a job at Amazon Web Services. So do you get the difference from that? It doesn't matter how much you have to show. It, what matters is how well do you show. So that people don't have any ambiguity in looking at this is what you want it, and I can do it too. It's a family, right? You get it. Perfect. Okay. How to build your profile um, on LinkedIn. So uh, for this particular thing, I was thinking I'll show you a LinkedIn profile, but yeah, we can, we can actually start with experiences. Always mention your experiences. So I've seen a lot of profiles where people write done an internship at say for example an XYZ company, but they never write about what did they do. People don't have the time. For example, HRs don't have the time to go through what you've done, like which company you work at. Can, can, can anybody tell me, okay, Deva, can you tell me which college are you from? Don Bosco. Let's speak, Sean. Sean is from Don Bosco Institute of Technology, right? HRs don't have the time to check how good the college Don Bosco is. I want to know how did I utilize. The HR want to know how did you utilize the four years of engineering? To make sure that you did something other than academics. Similarly, please, whenever you make mention that you've done an internship or you've done a job, please mention what you have done. Now, when I say what you have done, please mention about, see, for example, LinkedIn, which I did special projects for one year and three months. People, what they do here is they, they talk about what was the job role. Never do that. Never ever write about, talk about how did you use the job to make a difference? What were the targets you achieved? What were the goals that you accomplished? People want to know about that. People don't want to know about what the job role was because I see a lot of people mentioning what the job role was. For example, I, I came across a profile just a few days ago where the user had written, I'm an analyst at some ex a good company. And he had explained what an analyst is. What is the job role of an analyst? People don't want to know it. I don't want to know what, what did you do as an analyst. I want to know how many targets you achieve. So if you're looking for a job on LinkedIn, this is the first thing you need to change. First and the most important thing, do not write about what the job role, what is the thing that you did. Even for example, let's see all the students, you all might have organized a fest. Say for example, the hackathon. Please write about what were the targets you achieved. How many people came? What was the footfall? Like how many sponsorships did you secure? Write about all this. Do not explain what is the organizer. People already know it. Don't waste their time. Talk about the things that you've achieved. If there is something that you want to show, you can do that through uh, like an attachment to. Like for example, if there was a YouTube event or something of that sort, you can you can like attach it. But please talk about the accomplishments, the targets that you achieved. HRs love that. They want to know, they already know what an analyst is. So don't waste their time. Work examples is what I just spoke about. And education. Education, uh, can somebody tell me, uh, should you include your eight semester pointers in your education? Let's say, for example, you've written, you've written done engineering from Mumbai University. Should you include your eight semester uh, pointers? Any? I Guys, think on, you should. Speak, right? Absolutely. So there are two ways of looking at it. For me, I would put my pointers just because I have seen a slope. Mine was in a higher slope. But if you are a person who had a, an app like a pointer higher than 8.5 or something of that sort, you should make sure that you write about each semester. Each semester, the, the, I've seen people actually mention that uh, standing top three in the class or something of that sort. That is not actually necessary. You can do that, but not necessary. If your scores have been exceptionally well, then please mention your eighth semester of months. In DBIT section, should we write DBIT of Mumbai University? 
So in education section, engineering is done from John Bosco and Zero Technology. You can mention Mumbai University in a, in a close brackets. All right. You, does that answer your question? We will come to that. We can see my profile. Okay? Sean. Sean. Did Sean answer your question? Perfect. Okay. Uh, what is Devang? I worked previously as a marketing. One one line about what were you doing in life about as a marketing exec intern at this company. That is what you can write. But what is more important are your milestones. Milestones are a lot more important than what is a marketing exec. People already know what is a marketing exec. Don't waste their time. Talk about the things you achieved. What did what was the thing that you did so that it's not some like for example if you were doing a marketing role. How many, like, what were your, your strategies or something that you built for marketing? Talk about it. Got it? Perfect. How to customize a, how to create a customizable URL. This is something what I believe you should be know. It is, it is something I showed you on LinkedIn itself. Uh, it can, you can just create a customizable uh, LinkedIn URL. Like, you can just write your name or something. Uh, okay. This is, these are all the settings. So you can, you can, do you want me to go through all of this? You can choose the preferences and all of this. Can tell you the patient and all of that. Check your follow account and all of this. Okay, this was the question what I think people were asking me about. What should I write about? The best starting point is to respond to what's happening in your industry or profession. Does not matter how much you achieve, how much you become. He's right about anything. If there is a sweet gesture somebody did at work, if there is something that you felt from your heart that was nice, he's right about it. People like to read about good things. He's right about it. Don't forget, sharing a personal, sharing your personal stories and experiences is a genuine way to inspire others. So please, please, please inspire others. Do not stop. It doesn't matter if you're 17, 18, 19. I have seen people inspiring others at the age of six, seven. So you are at this point. So if you think that you've done something really small and it might have affected a group of six, three people, it does not matter. Please write about it. People, you have inspired others. Please make sure you understand it. There's not need to be a big thing. It always starts small. To understand it, it always starts. So, if you're going to neglect your like small victories, as you never have the fun and enjoy the big victories, these always always inspire us. So, there are three ways of posting on LinkedIn. One is a short form post that that is just there. So, this is a short form post. Let me show you. Uh, Okay, this is a short form post. Just writing something. The short form. Uh, let me see. Yeah, so I'll just get to it. Short form post is where you get a limited amount of words to write a post. So this is what I think most of your audience. Write about your workshops. So that is a short form post. And the article is where you showcase and videos. The three things that. Um, Comments and all you can order, similar to other platforms. Hashtags, I've already spoken about it. Tracking uh, uh, the performance of your content. This is very important. People do it. You should do it. You should always see what's happening to the people. How many people have viewed your content? Is it increasing from the last time? Is it right there only? Should you make any changes? You should always see the statistics. You need to do that for free. So you can do right? Just utilize it. You get to this, you get to this. So this is about uh, anybody who wants to know about the campus editor program, you can always reach out to me. Uh, we can talk about it in private section. There is a campus editor program that Zinedine runs every year. It's a global program, an exceptional program. You should always be a part of it. It is really nice. If you if anybody's interested, you can always drop me a message and I'll 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 make sure that I respond to it. 
So any questions with respect to your profile, building content, and so on and so forth? Any questions, guys? Yeah, about the recommendations and the tests that are there on LinkedIn for your skills. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Other than that, any questions for this? Guys, any questions? Anybody, any questions? I'll be really happy if you all have questions and make me believe that you've heard me. All else I think that you can speak to me. Any questions? Yeah, do you mind if I start my posting with this uh, session? I would oh, like to post about the session. And... Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Please write about See, the whole idea here is you need to write. People love to connect with people with the same ideas. I would love to know how, what various for this book, like this workshop. It's a Sunday. It's 4 o'clock. What got you here? What made you believe that you don't want to People love all of this, okay? They want to know. So, you're going to inspire others, and I'm, I'm, and I'm a part of this process. Amazing. Anybody, any other question? What age shall one start? So my sister, my youngest sibling, she's in the 11th grade, and I told her to start a program. Trust me, she's already done an internship. She's already been recommended by her, 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 her like her recruiter. She's just in the 11th grade. So there is no age you can start. Whenever you start, that's that's the correct age. So any any more questions? Uh, Sean, so while we send a connection, there is an option of add note. So is it a, uh, so should we like while sending anyone a connection, should we write a note and send a connection? Actually, I was getting on. So uh, I'll first uh, answer that uh, question about recommendations and tests on it. So uh, the part when it comes to recommendations, it's very important. First and foremost, it is very, very, very important. People like to see that you will recommend people actually like your work, they like what you are doing. Recommendations are very important. But having said that, please understand you cannot take recommendations from your class classmates. Those are not recommendations. That's a sham. Please don't do that. Please don't ask. Like this is what I, I realized and I was in my third year. People in my class were doing. They used to ask each other to write recommendations. Like to mera rik, mein tera rik. Do not do that. That is a very bad example of that question. Please ask recommendations from your mentors, from people who give you work, from professors. Never ask uh, recommendations from your colleagues. Until and unless it is a work colleague, you've worked for more than a year, who actually knows how you work. So I hope this answers your question. Recommendations are very important. Recommendations and endorsements are very important. You can ask your colleagues or peers to endorse you. But recommendations should be general. They shouldn't be something that... that and it just it should be something with uh, persona who had some experience because you see me work. So does that answer your question? Recommendations ke uh, there, there was somebody who asked me about recommendations. Does that answer your question? I I think it does. Uh, all right. So um yeah. The next in line was Agnes' question about sending a cold response. Uh, so you need to understand cold responses. Sending out a response is very nice. People love to see about uh, responses. I'll show you one actually, uh, a person who had reached out to me, uh, who, who told me that she wanted to connect. I'll show it to you so you'll be able to understand. People like when a personalized connection request is sent. But please make sure these, these are customized. These are not the same thing that you send to everybody. I'll show you, I'll show it to you. So is there anything else? Like any more questions with respect to LinkedIn, working on LinkedIn, and how to go about it? Anybody, any questions? Are you there, are you there guys? Can I, can I hear a yes please? Now I'm thinking, I'm starting to feel Yes, 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 yes. Everybody is here. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, okay. Perfect. Um, yeah. So I just had one question. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I've been through your profile and it's really nice. So you've mentioned about every single thing that you've done in your college life and at your job. So right. should we, uh, just like you said, uh, describe what you learned from what were your accomplishments 
doing that role should we mention that in every single uh, position that we have been to see uh, again let me tell this thing uh, let's say for example you've done three internships okay three internships let's say you're an engineering student who's done three internships one internship in marketing internship one is a sales internship and say one internship is your IQ uh, with respect to what you're doing all right three internships three different internships all different domains so when i am as a recruiter looking at your profile okay this is what i would see okay this person has done an internship as a marketing intern okay what, but he's an engineering student so why a marketing internship that is the first question that comes to mind so will, what do you think will you if if you just describe what the role was is it will it make any sense the first question that's going to come out is why being an engineering student are you doing a marketing internship so what what do you think if you just describe what the marketing internship is and not talk about the miles they be good they be any good tell me this is actually my case i've done an internship in marketing and sales but uh, so basically i was a very shy and introvert person so i wanted to come out of it so that was the reason i uh, went to do that and it has really helped me right. so mentioning all that uh, but i want to do the job in mechanical and not marketing so how do you proceed how do i proceed okay see when i know that this person see you need to understand companies when hr is of your profile and they recruit you they they see one important thing and that important thing is how many people can place can you take because a company has to shell out some amount of money a good amount of money So, for example, let's say you're a mechanical engineering student. Okay, you you got a job in mechanical engineering, but in the past profile preferences, when you've done some internships, okay, some done some internships in marketing or 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 sales, there are always these projects that come up in companies. So, for example, when I was uh, interviewing for Flock at Direct Time, uh, they had asked me about this thing. Okay, that you are an engineering. Go applying for a technical role, but you've done internships in marketing, sales, research analysis. Why? And how do you think is it going to be important to our company? So this is what I had answered: is that companies always have projects, ongoing projects. So along with what you're going to do, say for example, when you join a company, right? After a year, there will be an appraisal cycle, an appraisal, an actual appraisal cycle where they see what you've done, and that is when people want to know what you've done other than your technical role. So you need to take up projects, either cross department projects. This is where these internships come into place. You can talk about that you've done this marketing internship and you know a bit of marketing, and that is how you can help these departments. You can do a different project. So I completely get the position you are in. And talking about it, you can take up a role for like mechanical or a core job, but it is always good to be showcasing what you've done other than your mechanical. It is going to add on to your resume. Does this answer your question? Yeah, it kind of does. Thank you. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. So I believe we have gone through uh, most of the questions. Is there anything else that you want to talk about? Ask me. Anything else, guys? We are open for a Q and A session, right? The better the questions, the better. Because if, if if you think there's a question, do not do not already neglect it as being called stupid. Maybe there are other people who feel the same. So it's always good to ask questions. I do ask a lot of questions. Guys, if you have any questions, ask. Hello, hello, sir. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. I just had this doubt, sir, that uh, in case I uh, a job, <clears throat> a job gives me an, uh, you know, it gives me an opportunity, and when I'm actually thinking to take that job or not. How will I come to know that whether that job has growth, and not in my position, but whether will I have a growth, substantial growth in that company? So how can I come to know regarding that? Okay, so this is this is a, a very good question actually, very good question. Two things to this question is first and foremost you need to understand okay, you need to understand who are you approaching okay. So for example, there is a role okay, so there are there is a process. Let's say you want to get into an analyst role at some company. And that analyst role here, you don't know what is the growth opportunities. So first and foremost, to source out that job, please reach out to the correct person. 
who are you going to reach out can you can anybody tell me who are you going to reach out anybody here a research job a research analyst position let's say a media director and who will you reach out to no not an excel boy not an excel boy anybody director no directors don't have a time to check what you do they will never open your message this is the harsh reality they are never going to open your message even if they do they never reply so the logical answer to this would be people say hr say yeah, that's come hr but let me tell you this okay you need to understand the hr that you're reaching out to is she the one who actually handles recruitment so hr have a different sort of expertise they can be hrs who are into engagement they can be hrs who are into talent acquisition so never i would recommend that never reach out to an hr rather reach out to a employee who is doing the current role so for example this person asks me like how do i know there are growth opportunities reach out to this person who is already doing a job in that particular role get connected to him or her send him a cold cold message of why are you connected keep the message very crisp send out what what are you looking for that you've done in engineering degree which is the set of uh, things that i'm looking on to can you please guide me on be short and straight forward and i'm so sure that he's going to accept it you know she's going to accept it and that's how you can ask you can have a conversation you can get to know what are the interview opportunities what are the further roles i are there any ijps when i say ijp that means an internal job posting salary hike you can get to know everything about it so the right person will be somebody who is doing the same role with at least six months of experience it actually takes six months to realize what the company is so that is how you should know whether the job is correct or not is that answer your question yes sir perfect all right just give me a second i need to show you guys yeah shon can you hear me yeah yeah i can Hey Sean, so uh, how frequently one should uh, basically update his uh, LinkedIn, or should be uh, active at LinkedIn? Okay, so uh, the first thing to answer this question is being on LinkedIn and being active on LinkedIn are two different concepts. Fail to realize, fail to understand. When I talk about how frequently there should be a person updating something on LinkedIn, it can be every day. There are people who actually post every day. But you can have, always have your own time, right? You need to be active. Now, when I talk about active, it does not only mean you can only. This does not completely mean about posting itself. You can be networking with a lot more people. You can be connecting with them. You can be talking about future stuff. You can be commenting on people's uh, posts, getting to know them. Facebook and LinkedIn are very different. On Facebook, you need to know the person. On LinkedIn, it is not necessary to know the person. You can always reach out to the person. Talk to him or her and get to know what are they doing. So there are many people who reach out just just send out a cold message and talk about what interests them. But how can they do the same like about me? So being active on LinkedIn means that it does not only mean posting, but it means more than that. Networking is also being active. And Sean, uh, hello, can you hear me? I guess we lost Sean. Yeah, we are lost. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you had gotten freeze. Yeah, can Sean, we can hear you now. So, one more question, Sean. Uh, do you think that uh, whenever uh, you know there, there is a trend right now, wherein uh, freshers also you know they start sending in connections to randomly to anybody whom they even don't know, is that a good idea to do that? Connecting randomly. So, so let me put this out here. Let me break this out here. Connecting randomly is not wrong. Okay, is not completely wrong. But the correct phrase to this would be connecting randomly with the people you are going to work in the same industry. The people you want to work in the industry. Say, for example, if I want to do a tech role, an ML based role, so I should be reaching out to people who I don't even know. It does not matter. But in the ML industry. Connecting randomly should not be the thing that you should be doing. So, for example, if you're looking to get into marketing role and you're sending out, or if you're looking to go for a master's degree, and if you're just going on sending uh, connection requests to people who are not into master's or done that dream, lived it there, then it's a waste of time. Rather, reach out to the people you want to that 
who align with your goals. That is what you should be doing. That I think randomly is not wrong, but with the same set of people in all industry. But always make sure that we send out the poll response so that it does not look uh, that you're just 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 randomly sending out this poll. It should always be like, okay, this is the reason why I want to connect. Why I want to connect with you. That is the very reason I mentioned that all your cold messages when you are connecting with somebody should should have a, 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 a customized message. It should not be the same generic message. And do you think, uh, as a fresher, uh, uh, taking a premium account would be beneficial, or can be avoided? I hope that answer your question. Great thing to have, but I would suggest not taking it because it it it, it is it, the reason why I say this is because many of the people do not use the thing you want to give it, so they give about ten free emails. But I don't think many people could use. So when, what I feel is. A fresher should not be thinking about taking a LinkedIn poll or something of that sort, but rather should be focusing on connecting with people from the same, 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 same industry. Because LinkedIn poll gives you the features such as seeing the people who view your profile. Like even if that is a private profile, you can check that out. You can you can see somebody's profile without letting them know. These are some of the features you can you can probably send out ten in emails, which I think which I don't think is special to be needed. Fresher's whole perspective should be finding or maybe doing things in a line with what they want to do in the future. So take the link and go at the fresher state, not really recommend the recommendable. But if you think you you like, if you think that you have the money and uh, you're gonna waste it on say a Netflix, I'm not gonna say waste it, but if you think that you have a Netflix account and you can, like if you want to compare it, then I would say link and go is better. If you have the money, and if you feel that you should be putting on to the good use, then always taking having it is always good. But at this pressure state, I don't think it is very necessary. Not very necessary. All right. Um, that one second. Any, any questions, guys? You can keep asking questions. I'm just searching for. Um, Okay, so so how followers and connections you can connections you can you can only choose to follow a particular account, you not necessarily connect with them. So when you choose to follow that account, you get to know everything about the posting, the content they create. But when you choose to connect with them, uh, you get to know everything about their activity rather than other than uh, just their posts and their content creation. So that is the difference. You can you can connect and not follow, and you can follow and not connect. These are two. Okay, let me let me show you. Let me just show you. So first and foremost, let me show you a cold message. First and foremost, what is the reason of what they do, the authenticity of the what they do, and third, what is the thing? So always keep your cold messages when you're sending out a cold message, crisp and short. What, like how, why do you think are you connecting with me? Is that you do? And third, what are you looking for? These are the things I And this is some, let's say, uh, I think. All right. So, um, so yeah, somebody asked me about getting a data science role and how can you connect with people. So please use this uh, filters that we get in here. It's very important. So, for example, if you're looking for a data science role, uh, people in the data science industry, okay. Sorry, data science. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So you can see all the. Can I get the recorded yeah. video? Can yes. I get the recorded yeah, video? Everyone. Yeah, yeah, you will. Okay, so you can use the filters uh, available to get roles. So you can choose. So you need to understand what are connections. So first, second, and third. What do what do you think it means? Can somebody tell me what does first, second, and third mean? Uh, 
First is uh, the person you are directly connected to. Second is they are friends or they are mutuals basically. Uh, they are friends of your connections. And third is basically I have no connection between them. Perfect. This is alphabetical. Can you can choose this, the way you explain. Sean, your voice is very dark. Can you choose? Can you go again? Okay, just... Yeah, one second, one second. Yes. Yeah, it is. All right. So yeah, so uh, you can use the filters to look out for people. Uh, you can always get the people, like for example, some people ask me for data science. You can choose, right? you can choose a current company if you're looking out for. And reach out to them. Disconnect if you want to send out, like I would always prefer sending out a small, small point message to these people. And yeah, just, just reach out to them. I hope this answers your question of like, reaching out to people in the data science. Say for example, if I'm looking out uh, for, uh, I don't know, uh, let's say a marketing role. Mar marketing role. All right. Uh, so you can get these things, right? You need to connect with these people, get to know them. And if you're looking for a company, the company, connect with that particular company itself. People are looking for So let's say Amazon. So I can do that. And then I can choose for people. So I get everybody who's working at Amazon. I can filter it out with, say, like, let's say, India. Show results. So you can get everybody who's working at Amazon Web Services or who's worked at Amazon Web Services. You can get all of it right here. So please use the filters wisely to choose, to choose people that you're looking out for. This is answer your question. The person who's looking for uh, data science in particular. Any other questions, guys? Any other questions? So this is what I was talking about, views of your post. You can always see how many people view your post. So these, are, these are the statistics. This is how you can use LinkedIn to crush your absolutely. So any any questions, guys? Any questions right now is the right time to ask. Any questions, guys? So uh, this is one thing about recommendations. So uh, there's somebody who asked me about recommendations. Uh, yeah, so let's just show it. About what can you do for recommendations? Please always make sure that your recommendations, uh, how many ever, just, just make sure what you do and make sure that you Recommendations always make sure that you take from people who you worked with. So keep it, keep it, reach out to people who you work with. Make, make sure that your uh, relationship with them is shown. Always do that. Always make sure that your relationship with them is shown. It shouldn't be a peer or something of that sort. You get that? Or does that? Get some clarity now. Yeah, it does. All right. Yes. Any other questions, guys? Uh, we have these 20, 20 minutes slot for questions. Like any any questions, guys? Else on chat. If I'm gonna get back to you, how can I do so? Okay, let me just put in my LinkedIn profile URL. It's connected. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. Uh, yeah, so this is my LinkedIn profile URL. And the following is my number. You can always reach out to me. Please, I'm sorry if I don't reach out to you back in a couple of minutes or so. I'm not very active but on, on WhatsApp, but I'll try my best to answer. So there's an edit post we get not at all. Fancy, not at all. An edited post does not change anything. It does not change or hamper your potential uh, 
like a potential good like a scope sort of a thing with respect to all your particular view what the you need on a recruiter it does not recruiters see you need to understand recruiters don't have the time okay to check all these little details they don't they just read about what you've done what you're looking for and if they connect well they they connect you that that's it that's how simple it is these these little things don't you need to understand the right right amount of uh, focus you need to give the right amount of focus to the right things post correctly make sure that you post good stuff not not only always about your accomplishment even if you're doing that make sure you choose to write how did you get it then the next should be uh, always make sure that you are active on linkedin now being active on linkedin what would i to do because it was not only limited to just just being on linkedin it needs to be more than that connect to people get to know them if you are looking to get a go for an abroad like a you know like a masters abroad please connect with the professors with the from abroad trust me there is nothing like a barrier or something these people i'll tell you from a personal instance initially when i was looking to go abroad for uh, for masters i connected with so many professors so many deans and i always spoke to them about what should i be preparing for or how should i be preparing for a particular masters and trust me these people are really kind to answer back to you they always make a point to answer back to you so that you were never left out so never feel like it's going to be a big deal or something it is always nice to reach out so always make sure that you reach out don't just be active on linkedin by making a profile make use of it any other questions guys please 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 ask me questions so once a profile is created you start posting but now you're looking for a job so how do you on linkedin find a job and uh, applying on the job section on linkedin does that work all right first of all understand what companies are you like look, looking to source out for job so for example if you're looking to get a job uh then let's say a python developer job okay and you need to find out all the openings for that job so just use the filters that i just spoke about openings for python developers check out all the recent posts all the recent posts don't just rely upon the linkedin job postings do not do that trust me the magic is in checking out how many people have posted about how many people are posting the job opportunities there are so many people other than the hrs who are ready to give references who are ready to give out jobs this is the this one person i connected with a year ago from pwc who was a senior uh, senior product engineer who had just posted out and was giving references and he referred me to so you need to find all the people who are posting use the content filters that is where the whole magic lies that is where you get to know how many jobs are being posted how many people people are posting jobs and connect with these people first and connect and reach out to them this is what you got okay let me just show you one of it what i did so when i was in my fine like uh, Find me on yeah. Let me show you. All right. So this is one uh, guy who had posted. I had checked out his profile post that uh, Clever Tap was looking for a role for customer success engineer. So this is how I reached out to him. Hi, yes. I hope you're doing well. Just came across a post of your yours regarding the customer success engineer of Clever Tap. Something that I'm inclined to. I just wanted to know a little bit more about your work. If you could just walk me through it, it'll be wonderful. Looking forward to hearing from you. thanks to everyone he replied to me he gave me a better idea of what the role is he asked me if i'm into it and then asked me and let me even refer me for the role he took my resume he referred me for the role he got me an interview i got up to the hr role and then i then then there i had obviously apply for other roles so i had to come for those that were offering me more so the the key to getting a job through linkedin is no being patient you have to be patient you have to reach out to these people you have to keep following up so if you see he's mentioned that i like your resume it's a bit long but the profile is good so he's given me his his feedback on my resume but i it's it's, it's always good to me so this is a, this is my sort of a reasoning to it and uh, yeah so what so have you experienced like uh, these people they reply very often or not So, see, you need to understand HRs might take some time, but when you reach out to these people who are recruiting the same role, say for example, if you are reaching out to a senior customer success engineer in this instance, they will reach out to you at that same particular time when they posted that job. So they need people to join, right? So that is the reason they are posting. Right. 
So this is the reason why he he asked me for a role. He got to know me more. This was a one week long uh, communication that happened. Okay. So then he, then I kept following up. So the key to visit that you have to follow up. So yeah. So I hope this answers your question about getting a job. Do not only rely upon this particular tool here for jobs. The whole process Let's looks say, quite easy. Pardon? Yeah. The whole process looks quite easy. Is it like you can really find really great jobs even after placements are done, just like yeah, this? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. See, I'm I'm so sure your training placement is a very difficult job. That is always there, but it's always good to be like always sourcing out the jobs. It's always good to be a reliant, like when you're reliant upon yourself to get a job. So let's say let's say um, can can somebody give me a job role, like any job role, anybody? Um, let's just work. Basic practical example. Can anybody give me a job role? Yes, like analyst. Okay. Analyst. Okay. So yeah. So you have to find out business analyst roles, right? So find out people who are doing the business analyst. Role. So he's a qualified. All right. Reach out to him. HR se pehle these guys will respond to you. HR might take some time, but these guys will always always respond to you. Let's say if you want to check out all the openings for business analysts, use the correct keywords. You get a lot, a lot of them. You can just select, let's say, past two, show results. So Rohan Goyal is like uh, looking for business analyst support at Amazon. So these guys may not be in your. Uh, What do you say? Your connections, but when you write all this, you get so many, so many people looking out for jobs. So you can reach out to these people and get to know about the job and start creating your own process, your own pipeline to get a job. So does this answer everybody's? Does does this clear some ambiguity? Say, for example, Karan Chaudhary, he's not an HR, right? So he's posted. Yeah, so he's posted these job roles. So you can reach out. See now, when you see this, there are not many people who reach out. So not many people who know about. It. So when you know about it, you have a better higher edge to get this role. You get that. I hope this helped clear a lot of ambiguity. Okay, sorry, I see this. S P E. S P E. You will get a lot of job roles here. You get a lot of role openings. Whatever. S D is about they want company secretary you get it. you get it you you just have to type it and you get it. that's how easy it is any more questions guys please feel free to ask like ten minutes any questions you want to say something you want to talk about something well, so guys please ask any of questions because we are almost to the end of the session uh, yeah if anyone has a question please uh for like. You all, you all, you all can write it in the chat box, or should we like wrap up the session? If no questions are there. Also, I've given you. If you feel that this is an open forum and people want to ask you, I've already given you my profile and my contact details. You can reach out to me. You can have a small chat session. Yeah, Rohan, guys, I'm posting a feedback form. Uh, please do fill that. And please let us know what other events you all want from the training and placement cell as well. And please ask questions because Sean has given us Sunday so that we our questions are answered. So anyone has any type of question, just post it on personal chat if you don't want your name to be disclosed. It's totally fine. Yes. I had one last question, Sean. So. Yep. So while you know, uh, so while we are finding a second job, so how uh, you know how can we use LinkedIn for that? So uh, with second job, the most important thing that comes to your mind should be a uh, notice period. Okay, so the important thing about getting a second job is serving a notice period. So you should always reach out. To, the, the process is going to be the same. People are going to be posting the same things. So you have to reach out to them and tell them that you're serving a notice period. Just as you might have seen, just and ask me how soon can you join the job. So what he was trying to imply is how much is the notice period. 
you get that you get that so you cannot always make sure that you never discuss finances or uh, or something very critical on a chat or a call this should be discussed over an interview itself never ask about salary expectations in in in, in a chat box never tell them about your salary current salary in in a chat box always make sure that happens on a call that is the way you go about it. that is how you need to go about it. you get it yeah yeah totally second job is going to be lot more easier than getting a first job second job you have already done something people are there to recommend you people know that you have done some amount of work so second job are going to be easier than a first first ice cream job so i hope uh, this kind of answers the question but you if you have any more like details you want know, to know Yeah, and also one more thing, like sometimes there are opportunities on LinkedIn which they are people are seeking experienced people. So how to filter that? Like how to know that this is for freshers and this is not for freshers because sometimes it's not mentioned on LinkedIn job roles, right? Yeah. So see the whole the whole idea here is to communicate. The whole idea here is to communicate. So I talk talk about a role at Browser Stack. So everybody is aware about Browser Stack. I I hope so. It's one of the biggest startups in Mumbai. Is just uh, turned into a unicorn. So, there was a role at Browser Stack. Uh, it was for a business analyst, and uh, the person who had posted it was a head HR, head HR at uh, Browser Stack. So he had mentioned that you need one year of proper experience in working that way. But I was very much interested for that job, so I reached out to him. I told him, "Sir, I'm very much interested, and uh, this is the thing that I'm looking for. So can you can you tell me if there is a chance?" So when you talk in a way that people actually understand, okay, that he's very much interested about the role, they are okay with cutting down that one-year experience gap. So this is what he had told me. Rahul had told me that it's fine. Like I'll try my best to make sure that that does not affect your attitude. And he gave me the role. Like he he gave me an interview. So you need to make sure that when you're reaching out to people, you need to be very humble. It's you who is asking for a favor, not them. You need to ask them for a suitable time to talk. You need to understand that if they are free or not. You need to you need to be like very much over the topics about this. You cannot be that you you cannot just be like, hey, can you give me this? Job? This is not how this works. You need to be patient. You need to be following up each time, understanding that the other person is going through a lot other than this. This is something he's doing out to like to maybe just because he's he's in the mood or something and he's doing it. But this is not his only job. He's doing a lot more than that. So understand this, and I think that should be like that should solve all your issues. Like right? the moment you realize, right, you are the one looking for favors, it solves half of the issue. Because then you realize to be humble, you realize to be like coming up with the same person, and that is how you're going to land an interview. See, the most important thing is your grades, CADs, all of this is amazing. You can have a ten pointer, but not necessarily you get a job at Amazon or Facebook. It's not necessary. You need to know that. Apart from that ten pointer, the ten pointer can get you into the interview room. It can make you get that place. But in the interview room, it's going to be you who has to talk about yourself. If you're not good at communication, if you're not good at portraying what you've done, then trust me, you're not going to get the job. I'm telling you this from like I'm telling this to you from experience. You're not going to get the job. And even if you do, I don't think it's going to be worth it. So it's better that apart from your chats, you start you start using these. Uh, These tools, such as LinkedIn and so on and so forth, and start choosing to get them a job, and probably show some university if you're going up there. I hope this answers your question. Anything yeah, else, guys? Guys, anything else? Guys, any questions? Uh, or shall we like wind up the session? Guys, anyone okay. wants to post it in the chat? Devang has written, and you sorted out. Every doubt of mine. Thank you very much. Devang, I'm, I'm more than happy. Uh, like I could, I could at least shed some insights. Please don't call me a service person, Devang. Uh, and if you have any doubts, anybody, you can always reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to help you because trust me, I've been there and and I know how it feels to 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 have some sort of guidance. So please, please, please do reach out to me. Thank you so much, Indrajit. Uh, your your feedbacks mean a lot. Uh, any any doubts, any questions? It's not about this two-hour session. You can always reach out to me.
I'll be more than happy to help. And any feedback, guys, you can give it to me right here. I'll be more than happy to know that and get better with it too. Any feedback, guys? So I think Agnew, this is done. If you have something, you can get me. Sure. Okay. Uh, so I have posted the feedback form. Link. You can post it there. A uh, feedback for Sean. I'll share that with Sean there. And you all have any queries or any doubts? Sean has posted his handle as well of his number and LinkedIn. So please reach out to him. Okay. Uh, there, there are just two questions. I'll just answer these two. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Any tips for postings if they want to take up uh, internship? No job. And and not an answer. Okay. So. Uh, let me give you a personal instance. I started my first internship and I was in the first year. My first internship was in my first year. So it does not need to, like it does not have to happen. Like you need some experience from the thing. People understand this experience is good, but it's not necessary. You just need to understand that experience can, is always good to have. It is not the only thing that you need. So you can be a great developer without any experience. Find out. So my, my, my advice to you would be, don't target MNCs, first and foremost. Do not target MNCs for internships. It's hectic. It's not going to serve you the purpose. And I feel it's, it's not that great. Always target startups. If you're in your first year and if you're looking for an internship, there are a lot of internship projects. Intern Shala, Intern Theory, RAP. Use these internship portals to get up your, your first internship. You'll get the experience of interviewing. You'll get the experience of, uh, of, of, of communicating, of giving aptitudes. Go for an internship in a startup. That is my advice. Never go for an MNC. Never. MNC may you'll be stuck to a role. Even if you get it, you'll be stuck to one particular role. But in a startup, trust me, you're going to have so many, so many opportunities other than your particular, your particular job. So it doesn't matter if you have a job experience or not. People looking for internships while giving out internships don't care if you have job experience. All they need is that you have the intent to learn. Whenever you're going for an internship, make sure that in the interview, you happen to say this, that I have the intent to learn. I want to learn. This is what I'm going to do. This is my future. Be very clear about your goals. Even if you don't know that this is exactly what you want. But have some sort of an idea. Do an internship in a startup. Trust me, guys, you always appreciate it. You always have a good idea about stuff to do, other than not doing it. So, yeah, I hope this answers the question similar. Yeah. And yeah, if you can, okay, this is just an advice join clubs. Now, not the college clubs, but there are other clubs outside, such as Red Cross or probably uh, ISEC. So, I was a part of ISEC. And if you can get into these clubs first before getting into an internship, that's going to help you a lot to improve a lot. Yeah, that, that's true there. What is your experience at Clock? Oh, Clock is okay. How's your experience at Clock? Clock is amazing. There are a lot of things here. It's a startup, and the uh, director has just, uh, Zika has just become a uh, unicorn. So that is something that we are celebrating right now. Working at Clock is, is amazing. It's, it's not always work, 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 but it's more than that. Trust me, there are PlayStations. <laughs> And so, so you can, you can you can totally imagine how exciting work is. Um, yeah, like Clock, trust me, it's a very good company. If you're looking out to get into Clock, please reach out to me. I can refer you. If anybody here is looking out to get into Clock for any roles, do reach out to me. I can I can like I'll be happy to refer you. Working at Clock is amazing. Trust me. Any other questions, guys? There's, there's just, okay, out of context, but can you talk about AWS? I wish to apply that. I am a mechanical engineer. AWS, Amazon Web Services is an exceptional role, exceptional company. But the thing is, they offer you an internship first. So, so what happened to me was they offered me an internship and then they offered me a permanent role. And they asked me for my opinion whether I would take it ahead or not. But I was more into something of a non-tech sort of a management role because that is my future. That is what I think my group aligned. So I did not take up the role for the firm job. So my advice to you is, if you're looking to apply for AWS, you you might probably want to want to get into the DCE role, DCEO role, which is the, the, the mechanical sort of thing there. So start working on your uh, 
basics about everything about uh, uh, the data center start learning about things other than data center okay you you try to do mba so if you are trying to do mba then 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 trust me you know, i would suggest start this is what my suggestion would be take up a role in a startup this is what i'm going to take up a role in a startup startup any startup that is going to affect your mba if you are an upper edge in your mba interviews whichever university you're planning to get into then if you're planning to take in mumbai if you're planning to go to the voices pune or these big iims i mean join me in the start of time perfect then, then you should i would tell you you should try getting a permanent role there that would i should i can tell you thanks for spending your time for the session love you there oh, thank thanks sean thanks i like sean commenting complimenting sean thank you so much anything else guys i think we are on the edge i hope this these tag bits of knowledge that i tried sharing with you uh, gives you some sort of an advice but if you need somebody to talk to if you need somebody to just talk about something trust me i'll be your man you can always reach out to me i'll be more than happy to help you yeah happy sunday guys i'm so happy you could you could give me your time really really happy thank you so much have a great evening